Better Boston Healing Tonics is a book that blew me away when I found it earlier this year. It's so thorough, so accessible and so creative, sharing many ways to make broths and make them easy, plus incredible healing recipes for broth tonics, infusions, blends and meals. In this episode, Andrea interviews half of the pair that created the book, Jill Shepherd Davenport. They talk about healing with nutrition and how Jill, as an experienced practitioner, approaches it. Jill shares her broth tips and tricks and also talks about the revelation to me in the book, Sweet Broth. As Jill says early in the episode, there is so much healing possible in your kitchen. Listen in to Andrea's chat with this expert and get playing with broth. And stay to the end when I'll rejoin you to explain how you can win your own copy of Better Broths and Healing Tonics. And if you're a Patreon, check out The Treasure Trove, where you'll find two of our favourite recipes from the book. Welcome to the Ancestral Kitchen Podcast with Allison, a European town dweller in central Italy, and Andrea, living on a newly created family farm in Northwest Washington State, USA. Pull up a chair at the table and join us as we talk about eating, cooking, and living with ancient ancestral food wisdom in a modern world kitchen. Right. Good early morning to you, Jill. How are you? I'm great. Good morning to you. So for the listeners, this is not my usual Allison sitting across the internet from me today. This is Jill Shepard Davenport. And she is a co-author with Dr. Kara Fitzgerald of this amazing book. I think Allison heard about this on another podcast or something, Jill. Um, I was trying to remember how she came across it. It's called Better Broths and Healing Tonics, 75 Bone Broth and Vegetarian Broth-Based Recipes for Everyone. Wow, this book is awesome. (laughs) I'm so glad Allison (laughs) told me about it. And I think everybody who's met me since (laughs) Allison told me about it has also heard about it because (laughs) I started reading it and I was like, this is a medicine book. Like, this is. This is food medicine. I mean, it's amazing. This I'm just blown away by the level of research that you guys have put into this book. So, oh, awesome! <laughs> well, let's spread the word not not just about the book, but about food as medicine. There's so much healing possible in your yeah, kitchen. Yeah, I'm so excited yeah. to dive in. You're so right, and honestly, your book makes it uncomplicated because I feel like. <laughs> There's a lot of things out there where people are like, oh, it's really good for you. Just do this or something like this. And then people who have no idea what this or something like that is, they're like, what are are you talking about? (laughs) This book just makes it so simple. So I'm super stoked to talk about it. And I'm super stoked for our listeners to hear about this book. I have questions from Allison because um, she was hoping to get to talk to you. But as it turns out, they're like destroying the apartment above her so you wouldn't be able to even hear her voice if she was on the audio so um, well hi Allison hi (laughs) I look forward to answering your questions yes so I have her questions it's just great to chat with you yeah awesome so how we start our episodes is I ask you what did you last eat before we recorded Ooh, okay. Uh, So I've been doing a smoothie in the morning lately. And let's see, what did I put in it? So kind of my usual goes something like this. And this is what I did this morning. Uh So I throw in a handful of wild frozen blueberries. Mm. And I tuck in spinach and kale, a carrot, um, a few, kind of just a few uh, squares of frozen mango for just a touch of more sweet. And then I throw in acai, but the, the unsweetened real stuff, not, not the sugary topping stuff. Um, and then three t- uh, tablespoons of hemp seed hearts. I lo- I'm really loving hemp seed hearts these days. Okay. It's like 10 grams of protein plus B vitamins plus about half of the RDA for magnesium, uh, omega-3 fatty acids. Wow, so magnesium. loving that. It's like nice. 
Yeah. So it's like this whole food protein powder, essentially, but it's, you know, it's whole food. And then she and flax goes in there and then I blend it all together with our sweet bone broth. Oh, that is definitely one of the things that's actually on the list to talk to you about as your sweet bone broth. <laughs> awesome. Oh, that's so cool. That's so great. I'm glad you mentioned it. Um, wow. Okay. Do yeah. you soak your chia and your flax seeds first or do they go in like, like not so? How do you do that? You know, great question. It just sort of depends. And I know that that we soak and that makes some nutrients more bioavailable and, and things like that. Um, you know, I'm often just just grinding them up really well. Nice. And here's my trick when you're making a smoothie. I find that if you first put in the liquid, and maybe everyone's doing this already, but it took me a while. Mm-hmm. I find if you first put in the liquid and then put in any type of seeds you're using or any kind of nuts, blend it up first thing, and essentially you've made your seed and nut quote unquote milk, and then throw everything on top of that. And that's the way to make sure that you're not crunching on whole seeds. Wow. And so okay. that you're getting more of the, the, the powerhouse nutrients out of them. A little them. hot tip for the blender verse (laughs) i love it that's awesome um okay well thank you for telling me about that um your breakfast sounds delicious if you've been around ancestral food for 10 minutes you know liver is a superfood you're looking at a food packed with vitamins a k a broad spectrum of b vitamins coq10 bioavailable iron plus many essential minerals and more Liver is your first stop when seeking to gain energy and restore your health. Not only is it a delicacy and staple of traditional diets, it's the first thing most animal predators go for when hunting. Are you looking for a good way to work liver into your daily life, but getting it on the table just isn't happening yet or as much as you'd like? This is where liver capsules come in. Allison and I are both supplementing our ancestral diets with liver capsules from One Earth Health. We get all the incredible benefits of liver, even when we're on the road or preparing non-liver meals for our family, and the sourcing and preparation has all been handled for us. One Earth Health produces nutritious organ capsules from 100% grass-fed New Zealand-raised cattle. Support the pod by purchasing through our link, and you'll also get 5% off and free shipping as a bonus. Go to oneearthhealth.com slash ancestralkitchen or check the show notes. Uh, I know, <laughs> so for people listening, um, Jill and I were talking before we started recording, and we're both going on like four, four and a half hours of sleep. <laughs> so this will be our best episode ever because it will be Let's talk about health and healing. <laughs> yeah, and also um, let's talk about resiliency and adaptability. Like that's, yes. that's something, um, I don't think I would recommend this as a chronic way of life, but... <laughs> For a short, acute period of time, um, I'm super fascinated by how you have details in here, in the book, on your food, on ways that it can help you um, cope with things like this. So, um, like I'm just, I'm just looking at your nettle, astragalus, and mushroom boost, and it's like at the yeah. top you've got the little sign that says stress busting support, just things like that That's that make so this true. book so usable. So. Um, oh, I'm so glad. Yeah, yeah I love Astragalus. Well, and I'll just say, Andrea, I mean, so we were joking about how we're both kind of <laughs> running on, on, on fumes here. And um, and how kind of important it is to realize that like, we don't have to be perfect, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Some nights are going to be like that. And then if we can sort of tuck in healing nutrients during the day and shore up our resiliency, that's yeah. great. Or maybe some days it's just quick wins and we, we can't really fuel our body most appropriately and we're getting more sleep on those days. So yeah. it's kind of just about the... A puzzle piece of, of healing and getting in as many parts and pieces to fit together as we can. Right. Um, but I'm, I'm laughing because yesterday I recorded something, um, a webinar with two neuroscientists, and we were talking about the importance <laughs> of sleep. And so I'm thinking That's about, oh my goodness. <laughs> And I'm, and I'm thinking about, you know, uh, how I'm doing this morning in terms of like clearing beta amyloid plaque yeah. and, and getting deep in <laughs> REM sleep and consolidating memories. So none of that happened last night. Gotta get those beta <laughs> sleeps. Oh, <laughs> but I did, I did a uh, super fuel with my sweet bone broth this morning. So yeah, yeah. it's all about balance. Here. I feel like that when we look at the human body ancestrally, that's a lot of one of the hallmarks i guess of of health is that you live if you can live somewhere where you're mostly mostly having the days of wins and then you have those acute moments 
um, where your body systems get maybe tested or stretched a little bit. Um, but I feel like it's when those are persistent <laughs> every single day. <laughs> You're always a little short on sleep. That becomes such a huge problem. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. The pattern, right? If the pattern is one that isn't health promoting, that's one thing. But if it's sort of intermittent blips, that's, that's another thing. And um, I think that's what you're saying. Yeah. 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 And I was talking to a, a wonderful, extraordinary health uh, coaching friend the other day who was saying, you know, in school, if you're going for A's, you don't have to get 100% on every test. Even if you're going for A's, oh. that's, that's 90%. Right. Wow. So, so if you're hitting your goals 90% of the time, you're still kind of straight A living. And, and that's by the way, if you're hitting your goals, I love it. I know. Um, and if you're hitting your goals 80% of the time, that's still awesome too. You're still kind of getting straight B's, which is great. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. You're on, on the progress to refining systems and things like that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we, <laughs> sometimes I feel like some of the, um, advice that you see out there is written in a world absent of <laughs> <laughs> the real life <laughs> and um you think okay well does anybody really have seven hours a day for that you know but um yeah yeah coming and from, you know and so oh go ahead well just just coming from real people you know you and dr Kara being real people with real lives and saying look Sometimes we get stuck in traffic. <laughs> Sometimes we have less sleep and this is how we cope. I really love that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And um and so we really wanted to make this this book, which I know we'll get into, uh -huh. um, better rods and healing tonics. We really wanted to make it usable and doable for folks, right? Mm -hmm. So there's this whole idea of food is medicine and you can read a whole lot about it, but we wanted to go from sort of people learning to doing, <laughs> from thinking right. about it to using right. the, the information. And so the whole idea is to make a system for people so it can sort of be rinse and repeat mm -hmm. week after week and suddenly becomes ain't no thing, just part of the routine. Yeah. And then we've done the work for folks and thinking about how to tuck in, you know, this spice and this herb and this food combination to support things. And, you know, I'll say the whole first set, like the whole front of the book are recipes, including broths, uh -huh. boosts, and tonics, and healing infusions and tonics, which literally can be made in, in less than 10 minutes, all of them, less than 10 minutes of hands-on time. And the idea is we wanted to hit people up with healing recipes, those people who just, you know, they, they don't have any time to spare. Yeah. Um, yeah. Even for those folks, this, this, this healing in your kitchen, as I like to say, um, we wanted to make it super doable and super possible. Yeah, well, I think you nailed it in this book. Oh, and the blends too. The yeah. blends are awesome. Oh my gosh. Um, I'm so excited just like about a those. Couple of couple of minutes of hands-on time. So. Yeah. Like, okay. Um, hello, warm latte blend with immune support. I mean, come on. <laughs> like know. what? Yeah, that, that's absolutely that was one of the first ones we made. Actually, I think that was <laughs> the first one that we made. And we thought, yes, we can do this because I really wanted. Part of this was made, uh, these recipes were developed through the winter, oh, and I really wanted to make yeah. like a warm smoothie, right? Yes. Something that can remote rather than shut down di digestion, which a cold smoothie yeah. can sometimes yeah. do. And if we make up cold, I don't know, I live in a cold sort of house that, you know, has a lot of... Uh, a lot, of, a lot of airflow, which is great, but it can be, it can be, you know, a freezy place in the yeah. morning. Um, I wanted that something that can be done super quick and warm us up. So once the uh, once that warm latte blend was a success, it was kind of off to the races to create yeah. like our almond and maca blend and our creamy cacao blend. Yeah, and, that one looks um, so good. I like how you put in the table of contents, like it says creamy cacao blend, and then you have your sort of sub heading or whatever electrolyte balancing so i can look and i can choose okay this is what i'm going for is electrolyte balancing right now or the herbal blend yeah, detoxifying yeah. okay that's where i'm at you know right yeah yeah and so i mean that was the other process too you know 
thinking about not only the recipe experiences and the ease that we wanted people to have, mm. but what are the most sort of common conditions that, mm. um, you know, Dr. Carapace, Jill, and I, that we've both seen in practice. She's a functional doctor. I'm a functional nutritionist, cell board certified nutrition and health coaching, knowing that we got to make food doable and easy and actionable. And, you know, a lot of people are walking in the door with issues of stress and anxiety and sleep or digestive gut health kind of issues going on. Or yeah. maybe they're that person's dealing with seasonal allergy, histamine, mast cell kind of needs or working on their immune system in general or pain or blood sugar. Yeah. Anyway, so that was the other idea, thinking about, all right, what are the common conditions? What are the healing foods for those conditions that we would ordinarily just put on a handout or a list? Let's stick them into a recipe, combine them, make sure that they taste great. And then let's say when you're going for working on pain and joint support, support in three minutes, you can make your green tea infusion and also read up a little snippet on why and how it's going to help you. Yeah, I love that. It feels a little bit like, um, like a consult, <laughs> you know, looking at the <laughs> things in the book, because I'm thinking about. Um, so you, obviously you both work in practice. And so, as you said, what you see is informing what, you know, you need to put in here. So you, you've kind of captured the majority of us, like, this is what we're looking for. Um, I just started yeah. seeing this amazing chiropractor who's all about you know, nervous system balancing and all of that good stuff. And so she runs all these tests on me and my heart and things like that. And she's showing me, oh, here's where we want to get you more in your parasympathetic. Of course, go figure. <laughs> and so then I'm looking in here and I'm thinking, okay, stress busting support. That's probably what she's what she would want me to look at. Um yeah, because yeah. so so I can take the information I get from her, and then it's almost like I can pair it with sitting down with you and you saying, Okay, so this is the food I would put, you know, in your bowl which is mm. exciting for me. I'm so glad you're having that experience. And also, by the way, just sideline, great job for taking care of you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad you're, get, you're getting your care. And you're walking yeah. the walk, so that's great. I, Welcome to the talk. I feel quite um, proud of myself for making the appointment. <laughs> yeah. You're awesome, Andrea. Um, yeah, I mean, absolutely. You know, and so, well, so to tell you a little bit about what I'm up to right now, so I'm director of health and wellness at this great company, Pennington Partners, and there, you know, my work is with highly successful entrepreneurs, but the company supports them on their financial and business success, and I work with, with these folks on their focus on their health for themselves, for their families, and then maybe, you know, thinking about what other ventures they want to get into next, mm -hmm. and folks are, you know, highly... Um, motivated to make an impact on the world and do great things and also have a lot of burden. I mean, can you imagine running a company, being responsible for other people's paychecks, mm -hmm. a lot oh of other God. people's yeah. paychecks, making sure that the product and what you're putting out into the world and the, the, the way you're, you're, you're um, contributing to the world is spot on and excellent. It's just a lot of pressure. And so absolutely. I love it when I, when I can tell this, you know, busy executive type, Hey, if you have three minutes, you've already made hopefully your bone broth on the weekend. And by the way, or, or your or your vegetarian um, based broth on the weekend. Ten minutes of hands on time. It can happen like as Netflix is sort of warming up. <laughs> um, and then tonight, before you go to bed, if you're working on sleep, you know, pop in some lavender, um, infuse it in the bone broth, and you're going to get glycine. And we can talk about all these benefits, but glycine yeah. to support sleep, yeah. lavender to support sleep, stress, and anxiety. Or um, for you, if you're having trouble in the morning and maybe you have a lot going on, and so when we're in fight or flight, the, the, the not parasympathetic mode, um, when we're more in sympathetic, you know, if you really need to get your digestion going and send the message to your brain, hey, it's okay to rest and digest, right. let's go down, like, let's say our herbal trio infusion um, that has all these herbs that support mm. the gut, but also get the digestive juices oh, flowing see, and it's going to take you two minutes or three minutes to make. Um, that's when for that busy person, whether it's work inside the home or outside of the home, um, that's where that busy person can, can recognize, okay, like this is possible for me too. Yeah. I can do this. Oh, I love that. 
yeah, this I'm I just flipped to the herbal trio infusion and the lavender infusion while you were talking. Um, yeah. and you have them in here with the mug version and the mason jar version, <laughs> which I love. Um, do you say mason jar because? Oh, it, it makes more and you could like put it in the fridge or something. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I mean, so a big part of this book is all about sort of batch cooking too, which is, thank you. Here, right? <laughs> so um, I'm a real person too. I mean, I, I absolutely need to batch cook to make it all yeah. happen. So yeah. So, so our infusions, uh, we give you tea bag versions, by the way. So if you just pop into your favorite what? grocery store, we tell you how to use those and then loose tea for, if you're making, you know, mugs with loose tea. Yeah. And then the loose tea works great with, with a mason jar. So you have, you know, maybe four nice uh, cups of whatever infusion yeah. that, that you're going to make. Yeah. Um, and then, by the way, if people are, some people tune in when they hear loose tea and herbs and infusion. And some people tune out and say, that's yeah. not me. Yeah. I, I need this to be, you know, simple. Um, in the book, in the resources section, I came across this awesome basically like a strainer that fits on top of a mug and fits on top of a mason jar. Nice. Basically like a stainless steel cup with little tiny holes in it. And it's just so easy. You throw whatever herbs you want in there. You pour the broth. And I really love sweet broth with many of our infusions. Um, you pour it over and it strains it out. You take the strainer, you flip it over. There's basically no cleanup, rinse and done. Oh, I, so I see this We don't have to deal here. with. Like the OXO yeah. one or the Mason Top screen sprouting. Well, there's those. And then there's that, I think it's Sweet, Sweezy, S-W-E-S-E. Sweezy. -E -E, <laughs> the name of the brand. Oh, I love that yeah. name. Yeah, you're um, right. I see that. Oh, yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I, I really like it. And, and by the way, I'm not collecting any kind of cash or any, <laughs> there's be. no promotional. <laughs> they, in the back, they're all just the links to all the brands yeah, you've got that a lot basically we use to make the book. You've got a lot yeah. of links in here, lots of good stuff. Um, you know, the, yeah. the Mason screen sprouting lids, um, I have yeah. some sprouting screens and I got, because uh, we usually, we put our milk in half gallon jars. And yeah. so I got this um, handle top, pouring top that you can screw onto the top of a mason jar, like a half gallon and pour out of. And then I realized that I could put the screen on first and then put the pouring top on. <laughs> I don't know if this makes any <laughs> sense. So then I like stuff the jar full of herbs and things and I can pour my water over it and then just strain it out as I pour it. <laughs> So nice. handy. No. So handy. It, it's all about the technique sometimes. No, smart. Literally. I, I think it's great. You know, I, I had a similar moment, should I tell yes. you, in, in making this book. <laughs> so I was also, so, you know, picture this, right? So experimenting with different ways to make broth. So by the way, you can make it in your Instant Pot or your pressure cooker. You can make it in a slow cooker. We also teach you how to make it in your in your oven kind of with a stovetop method. So, uh, you know, however you like to make your broth, you do you. And so can you imagine, it was one night after sort of, Jill's going to multitask and I'm going to uh -oh. make broth three different ways. <laughs> anyway, I'm sort of distracted as I'm trying to organize to get to bed. And I'm pouring the broth through the strainer and like half of it goes down the drain, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> like, what did I just do? And by the way, there was a stragglist in this broth, no. which is just precious, and I love it. And you know, I mean, I get we we uh, we show people in the back mountain rose herbs you can buy yeah. in bulk, yeah. really, really much better price um, than just kind of walking in other places. But anyway, it's still an investment. It goes down the drain, oh. and then I have this aha moment. There must be out there a nice stainless steel. A pot with a pouring spout. <laughs> so that is in the back of the what? book. I really encourage that people to get a, a yes to wow. get a stainless steel pot with a pouring spout. Pouring spout, and I, I've, I've basically barely lost a drop since. Then. Oh my god! So about the technique. So yeah, when, <laughs> so true though. When you think about things from a lean efficiency perspective, then you think, okay, how many items did I touch to make this happen? How many times did I pick them up and put them down? And which of those steps can just go away? Because at the end of the mm -hmm. day, then you're yeah. washing them all too. <laughs> you gotta wash all yeah. those dishes. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I love it. And this is this is the value of having um for anybody who's not familiar with the way w the world of publishing and food goes. <laughs> this is the value of having books written by real people <laughs> who are actually doing it in their houses <laughs> because their true experience comes in. You know, this isn't like a 
you know, AI generated recipes or something. Do you love oats? Want to try your hand at a traditional Scottish oat fermentation? Suens is just that. It was made in Scotland for centuries and will give you both a creamy, easy to digest porridge and a tangy probiotic drink. My video course, Suens the Scottish Oat Ferment, over at the Fermentation School, will guide you through everything you need to know to create these two ancestral foods in your own kitchen, no matter what equipment you have. Head to ancestralkitchen.com forward slash Suens, ancestralkitchen.com forward slash Suens, S-O-W-A-N-S, or click the link in the show notes to get a 10% discount automatically applied. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> we're, a real, we're real. Um, and, you know, and I kind of, now that we're talking about equipment and making this real, I kind of want to just talk about community and public health too for a yes, second. Yes, let's go there. a big passion of mine too. I mean, my, my first degree before nutrition is in nutrition and, and public policy. And I mean, basically, I, 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 I love to think about the big picture stuff as well. And so for 12 years in DC, I ran a, a food as medicine consulting business, working with so my clients were government, non nonprofits, businesses, uh-huh. startups, mostly focused on food as medicine policy and program building. Um, so I did that alongside my private practice, food as medicine, um, working on healing and preventing chronic illness and big passion of mine, um, working with folks on nutrition for their mental health. So doing the community work, I would often go into places, hospitals and community health centers that were just low on resources. And they would say, you know, this food is medicine stuff is great, but we just, we we don't really have a budget for this. And I would say, you know what? One, like, do you have a pot? They would say, yeah, we have a pot, whether it was a pop-up kitchen or kind of a larger kitchen. Awesome. Do you have a knife? Yes, we have a knife. Okay. Do you have a cutting board? Yes. Okay. You can use food as medicine. Oh, I love I, it. You don't I need, you don't need, and you need a heat source too. <laughs> and in some of those places, by the way, the heat source wasn't even an oven. It's, um, what are those called? These, uh, convection burners. Yeah, I love you those. basically just plug yeah. in and put it. So literally, and when I was working at the, um, Washington DC VA hospital, for instance, in creating some of this programming, um, we literally had a pop-up kitchen and the kitchen was brought to you on a cart oh my God. <laughs> essentially. And just, so it, it doesn't take much. I mean, yes, I'll talk about, you know, I, I do love my instant pot. I do love the, the, um, by the mix that I have with the stainless steel, um, uh, kind of outfitted it with a Breville stainless steel canister so I can make my hot soups and stuff. Nice. So there's benefits to that, but you can also do this with basically a pot, yeah, a knife, yeah. And a cutting board. I mean, this is peasant food. This is this is as old as it gets. So I hope that, you know, as folks are listening, you know, I hope that we can think together as a community mm-hmm. about how we can have the healing go on in our kitchen, but also supporting if you're involved with nonprofits or community efforts or at your company. I mean, in my company, a big program at Pennington Partners is focused on employee health and wellness. Um, so you can do it too, yeah. you know, um, think about ways that we can kind of all heal together. That, that's, that, that's my dream. No, I love it. I just talked to Hillary Boynton a couple of weeks ago mm-hmm. and she runs the school of lunch in Topanga, mm-hmm. California. And she started a school lunch program at her kid's school when her children were small. And now she's just been doing it for years and then now teaching other people how to go do it. But they prepare all ancestral and real food for the kids at school. And she says, you know, maybe they only get one nutritious meal a day, but here it is. And they do the most amazing things and the kids just eat it. She goes, the kids get so adventurous and the parents say, they'll they'll never eat those weird, you know, organs or whatever, but the kids do eventually. And she had mentioned bone broth was what they serve, you know, often for like the midday snack, little cups of bone broth. So that was such a good idea. It was a good protein hit. Oh my Think about this kid's brains and everything. And that's amazing. Go, go her and go mom. So yeah. That's just, yeah. that's phenomenal. mom power for real. <laughs> mom power. I think yeah. it's great. You know, and then, you know, this, this is just also making me think about, I mean, 
in terms of systems change. Okay, because those kids, they're going to concentrate better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They will hopefully be able to sleep better, be able to wake up easier. And and again, if it's, you may have covered this at length uh, uh, in other episodes, but we can talk about the healing properties of, of bone and, and plant-based broths we too. Should. And, um, and you know, it's gonna, it's gonna keep kids in their classroom more. And when we pop over to think about the adult side, you know, using food as medicine, there's cost savings for companies, there's yeah. cost savings for insurance 100%. plans, there's, there's just, there's so many, when we think about so 70, 80 to 80% of the chronic diseases we face in this country are preventable through diet and lifestyle. Wow. I mean, we're, we're talking 70 about- 70 to 80%. Um, just, that's crazy. Yeah, we're we're talking about we're talking about massive potential for change in this country, and I love where we are right now with the food as medicine movement, um, how it's really making its way into insurance companies and insurance plans, and there's programs now, and there's um, Medicaid pilots, and some focus on Medicare too, as well. I believe that's focused on like health equity and health access, and lowering costs and improving outcomes. For like a few specific diseases, wow. like uh, like kidney disease and uh-huh. diabetes and cardiovascular disease and hypotension, hypertension and needs of the elderly. So I mean, we're getting there. I think um, in terms of making all of this accessible and making this kind of conversation just ain't no thing. Like yeah. this is normal. Of this course, is how we think about using, how we do it using food, right? Yeah, this, this, this is, is how you do this it. This is where so, your absolutely your ground up efforts like with this book getting it into people's homes is going to have that massive ripple effect because if you know the the way we live our lives does affect the way our policy is conducted in the workplace and if every single person was eating this way they're not going to go into their you know management job at an elder care place and say all right hand out the jello cups you know what i mean they're going to say we need to be putting some really nutritious bone broth in front of our, in front of our, you know, patients or whatever. Um, oh my gosh. So, so true. I mean, having this piece front and central in hospitals, and by the way, the city of New York is doing a great job with that. No way. They, they, yeah, they're, they're literally having food as medicine type, you know, based menus with lots of healing, you know, nice. foods. Um, as as the sort of the um, the mainstay of certain uh, you know hospital diets, it is um, so remarkable. New York is really paved in the way. That's there. amazing. Yeah, it, it it is remarkable to me when you just go back through narratives and letters and journals and things. How little time it took for us to completely abandon the idea of food as medicine, because it was. I mean, it's still within living memory when it was a matter of course to dose people with food. Mm -hmm. And already we're at the point where some people are like, oh, that's alternative or that's woo woo or whatever. And you're like, it's not really. It's just science. (laughs) It's just food. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I think part of it is that we have so many convenience foods out there. And good point. we talk about this in the book too, like walking down the grocery store aisles, it's kind of like um, walking past landmines. I mean, of course, landmines are much more serious, but we're walking down the grocery store store, store aisle and there are just so many things to like have to avoid and jump mm-hmm. over and skip yeah. around. And, and uh, it just, it makes it really hard for the shopper. And, you know, I say something, we say something like, um, you know, wh- why would we eat all these foods that that literally take away from our health and well-being. Like, would we buy a computer that when we're touching the keyboards, it zaps us, right? <laughs> or would we buy sneakers that when we wear them, they, like, we can't run in them or, or they make our feet feel really uncomfortable and swollen. But yet, so many of us, and maybe not your audience, but, you know, so many of us are buying foods that, like, make us wake up with, you know, pain and aches oh, and, um, you know, and less energy and lower our immune system and make our brain work less. And we're yeah. we're paying for it on the front end yeah. with the food and the back end with our healthcare and our time, yeah. and so um, I really think it's about um, just kind of awareness and doability yeah. as, as we've talked about. Do you so think that we can choose the right things for us? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And do you see in your practice? Do you feel like a lot of people? Uh, because you you said we wouldn't do these things, you know, like we'll wake up feeling sick or whatever. 
well, mm. I don't know that a lot of people even relate that to their food because it's all they know. Like they just think that they feel this way. And then they go and ask a doctor like, hey, could you maybe treat me for the way I feel? And as to the best of my knowledge, a lot of times they're not given nutritional advice or maybe not good nutritional advice. But so do you feel like a lot of people actually are aware that that's what make, makes them feel the way they feel? Or do you think they just kind of don't know? Oh, Andrea, I mean, you're so right in that so often people aren't connecting the dots. And if that's you, if, you know, listener, you know, um, you know, I mean, you're not alone. I mean, it is really surprising, even to me, uh, how much food, you know, impacts our health. And just the other day, so, you know, a big part of my focus, as I mentioned, is on nutrition for mental health. I mean, it massively, even with serious mental uh, yeah, illnesses, yeah. it massively makes a difference. And there's a woman the other day who said to me something like, I just can't believe it, um, that, uh, working on my diet and my lifestyle, I just feel like I feel less broken. Oh my God. I thought I was wow. permanently broken. I was kind of diagnosed and told I was permanently broken. And in just around three weeks, um, I, I just feel so much, so much less. Broken. Three weeks. And oh my, the like, yeah. It like puts tears weeks. in and my eyes. That's insane. Yeah, oh and, and we were doing a variety of, of different things, but one massive thing was was changing the diet. And um, honestly, within a couple of days, she she felt so much better because oh one piece that's so important, and it sounds so boring and banal, but it's is supporting blood sugar. It's just yeah, yeah, absolutely massive to get the brain to work well, but also to get our hormones in check and our cortisol levels stable. And um, if you think about, you know. I mean, essentially, if our blood sugar is going up and down all the time, we're kind of living in a state of hangry, and there's just no way we can live and experience our emotions, um, you know, positively. So there's that. But so many people, I mean, I work with folks, and, you know, even some of my clients over the years have been doctors, and some of my clients now are super data-heavy, smart um, folks, and they've just never been introduced to the idea that if I eat, you know... And I think a lot of us get the message that sugar is inflammatory, but even sometimes products that have zero grams of sugar on the label, but are refined flours and, you know, refined grains, um, that when we eat them, they convert to glucose really quickly. Yeah. And people sometimes have no idea that when they wake up with sort of this arthritis -y feeling in their, in their um, knuckles, wrists, or joints, or maybe they wake up with a puffy face, um, or just kind of a slower start to their to their jump firing their brain in the morning, um, jump starting their brain in the morning that has anything to do with what they ate the night before uh, or the entire day before. Yeah, so I think you're so right um, about the need to help uh, help us all connect the dots. What is you you raise this question in my mind? What is something the one of the most common things you see? We'll say, like you alluded to, say, waking up with arthritic feeling in the joints or a puffy face. Mm -hmm. What's one of the most common mm -hmm. things you see that that you're that people come in with complaint about that you're able to nail with nutrition right out of the gate? Yeah, I mean, there's so many things. I mean, first, gut health, right? I mean, a lot of people have gas and bloating or their trips to the bathroom aren't quite regular or aren't quite normal, mm -hmm. quote unquote normal. Yeah. Um, and sometimes they'll be like, and then also, by the way, I have this eczema that came on, um, or this kind of itchy skin. Um, and I have these aches and pains. Uh, do, do you think this has anything to do with my diet? Mm. Um, and so, you know, we, we, we talk about how it could. And so for some folks, it might be appropriate to do an elimination diet for some period of time, taking out the common offenders and then shoring up their diet with the foods like we have in Better Broads and Healing Tonics. And then what, what I do is give them uh, symptoms to look out for, to see what goes away. And then when they go back and experiment and eat their usual diet, see what, what symptoms are brought on. And lots of times it's, it's remarkable for people. They're like, wow, my, my stomach, I haven't lost weight, but my stomach is flat. Like I didn't wow. know that that was wow. just bloating. Um, or I, you know, people will say, you know, my, my eczema um, is just, 
you know, getting so much better or gone, um, or I'm waking up and I kind of even forgot that I have to usually stretch into a routine in the morning because my knees and my ankles and even the joints and my fingers feel better. Um, and even for myself, Andrea, on this healing journey, when I first got into this field in nutritional biochemistry years and years ago, um, I did not recognize that this puffiness that I developed to my face over the years was, was just completely related to my diet. Wow. That there were certain foods, healthy foods even, maybe, that I was reacting to. And, you know, I, I saw my cheekbones again. Dang. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, I mean, the, I, food is really, I mean, not to overstate it, but food influences all our organs, cells, and tissues. So it's literally going to impact every bodily system that we have. How, how can it not? You said that in the book. Um, you said you had been so focused to quote you exactly on what to exclude mm -hmm. during the initial stages of my healing journey, that I wasn't gravitating toward many tasty options that could have picked up my healing pace, which is, there's a lot of yeah. interesting ideas in there, which is also, you know, you're alluding to, Hey, we could do this a little bit faster. <laughs> we could not drag it out. Oh yes. Yes. Which I love. And also all the variety that you, I mean, obviously you wrote this entire book is full of options. So there's lots of choices. Um, Absolutely. Can, yeah. can you talk about the sweet broth? So you mentioned it right when we started and I was wondering if you could talk about that. Yeah. Well, let me just ask you, have you ever had a warm smoothie? I don't know that I've ever had anything called that. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. So, um, so the the idea was to create something that could work in, let's say, a smoothie that isn't cold, um, but it tastes great. Um, and also, let's make a broth that could work in maybe a sweeter soup, or maybe even like treats. <laughs> um, we have a whole section, believe it or not, on sort of like dessert type healing. I healing mean, foods. yeah. Um, <laughs> So basically, um, our, our team, we created this really rather delicious broth and it's got cinnamon and cloves and nutmeg and it's got orange peel and carrots and apple and sweet potatoes. And it's not like sugary sweet or anything, um, but it works great in our sweeter blends and also in our sweets and treats. And, um, you know, it's got in there uh, choline and B12 and folate as methyl donors um, to support, you know, our healthy longevity, which Dr. Kara Fitzgerald's work is just so centered around. Um, it's got DNA methylation adaptogens that supports sort of aging healthfully instead of aging into disease and warding off chronic diseases. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And then it's got, and this is all laid out in, in the book and, kind of in a friendly and hopefully super accessible way. But in all those foods, it's got things like catechins and fistine and quercetin from the apples, and it's got camphorol from the cinnamon and cloves, and then more catechins in the nutmeg. And, and honestly, that, that's the short list. Um, and then plus with those spices, it's antimicrobial and antifungal, so it's supporting gut health and it's supporting blood sugar balance. Mm. And so it's this whole sort of milieu of wonderful tastes and flavors that's supporting your health in, in so many ways and then allowing you to sneak your broth into, you know, all sorts of sweets and treats and, and get some great options out maybe for kiddos <laughs> um, uh -huh. as well. I mean, just reading the recipe is like making me drool. <laughs> this sounds yeah. so good. Um, yeah. I love it. I think this is going to be such a, we have so many listeners that are so insanely creative and they just, mm. they take an idea and they just come up with the most insane, you know, when we talk about fermenting something and then they post this picture on their Instagram, we're like, oh my gosh, like I never would have thought of that. So I can't wait to see what happens when they're making these um, warm blends. And they're gonna be posting oh the most crazy gosh, things. Let me know. I will. <laughs> I definitely want to know. I what will people do. Yes, please spin and innovate. That's really great. Um, you know, one fun idea now that it is the summer, we have a strawberries and cream ice pop with broth, and we have a blueberry gingerade ice pop oh, with broth. And so they're, I think they're literally the last two recipes in the book. I'm looking right now. And um, when we got there, it was kind of like, ooh, there could be a whole book just on oh, like ice pops. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. They are the last one. Um, 
So yeah. I would love what, to see what people do in in, uh, in innovating and making new ice pop recipes. I mean, I'm thinking like I want to make this because the kids asked if we can make popsicles today. So I'm like, yeah, okay. Yeah. So I uh, guess fine. <laughs> I'm thinking <laughs> I could put in some of our milk kefir from our cow. Um, and then we do have some strawberries from the farm that's out here. Don't have any maple syrup right now, but we don't really need that if we put in strawberries, I guess. So, um, mm. this is going to go, this is going to happen. <laughs> and then I love that the kids will be eating it. And, you know, between you've got coconut milk in here, but between the milk and the broth, they're going to get so much protein. And so they won't be, as you alluded to, hangry <laughs> in uh, between their meal. Right. Yeah. Right, 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 right. Um, awesome. Bonus, bonus for kids yeah. and bonus for, yeah. for mom. Bonus for everybody. It is funny that we have a word in our language just to describe that experience of your um, emotional state tanking because of your nutritional needs. You know, that's so true. So on the one hand, we get it, right? And then on the other hand, I hear all the time, wait a minute, like what I eat really has to do with my mental, like what? health and well-being? <laughs> I mean, we know <laughs> so. it. I've heard people say, um, oh, now when my husband and I get in a fight, I tell him we can't discuss it until we both had a meal because it's probably just mm -hmm. that we're hungry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like that is true. So yeah, imagine how many fights could be avoided if we were eating, if we had this book. <laughs> um, so how do you feel about our food world? Do you want to see change like we do? If so, head over to patreon.com forward slash ancestral kitchen podcast and help support us to get this work out as far and wide as we can. To say thank you, we've got a host of extra ancestral food material to share with you. You can connect with us more deeply via our Patreon-exclusive podcasts, our after-show chats, our dedicated forum and our ancestral food get-togethers. And there's a library of downloads that will support you in your own kitchen. By joining, you'll be really helping us to continue making this podcast and to focus on having a bigger impact reaching more people, making a greater difference. So we can move together towards the future food world we all want to see. We've got four levels of support to suit different pockets. Check out www.patreon.com forward slash ancestral kitchen podcast for all the details. So <laughs> totally. So this book is, oh my gosh, it's so, it's so organized. It's so sorted. Um, I'm going to say real quick what your sections are so people know. I mean, obviously, everybody's already sold on the book by listening to this, but um, you've got basic broth recipes, then you've got base broth boosts. So these are things that you put in when you're like, hey, are you really going for sleep? Or like you said, are you really going for that rest and digest? Um, you have infusions and tonics. So this is steeping your broth with some herbs and spices. You have blends which I just want to spend most of my time right there in that section. <laughs> um, and then you have tons of recipes. Um, you've got the mini meatloaf with the liver pate. Um, you've got like your white chicken chili, Thai vegetable curry, then all the desserts and things, the gummies, which I know my kids will go bonkers for. So um, you also have a lot of really practical tips, like you said. So for processing the batch cooking, storing and freezing. I like that you do those um, cubes. So Allison said that reading your book changed how she stores her broth. So she's freezing mm. it in muffin tins now. Um, awesome. Yeah, I know. She's super resourceful. So, um, and I usually freeze mine in like jars, but um, it's not very convenient when you want it right away. So, um, Oh, I love her muffin tin idea. I know. So we lay out a whole page on, on um, you know, basically make broth, yeah. make better broth ice cream cubes. So when you're done, um, just pour your broth in ice cube trays and yeah. then you can pop out trays. And then we have a whole list of quick and easy, no recipe ways to use your broth. Mm. Uh, and then for larger portions, I think that's so smart, her idea of muffin tins. Yeah, I'll, I'll start I love doing it. That too. Well, I also love it because I'm... I'm a nut for freezing everything in ice cube trays. Like I freeze my way in ice cube trays so I can make fast lemonade ferments and things. 
and I freeze like mm. I grind up ginger with water and freeze that and I like freeze everything in ice cubes. Yeah, yeah, I don't know yeah. why I've never put broth in ice cube trays. But <laughs> <laughs> just go if you're if you into the idea, I just went at some point some years ago and got like 12 ice cube trays. So I can always be freezing things. Um Nice. Take broth to store broth in places you've never stored before. Yeah, I think true. that in our res- in our resources uh, at the back of the book, I think that we put in uh, the ice cream trays that were working well for us that are kind of like I flexible. I think you did. I feel like I saw um, it in there because it is and, a, that oh, is and important. They have, they have a yeah, and they have a top on them too. So if you're that person yeah. thinking like oh, this is going to end up all over my <laughs> freezer, uh, we got you. Or more like everything else in the freezer is going to get dumped onto this. Let's <laughs> keep it right, safe. Right, right. Yeah, I think you yeah. did see that in here. Um, you have tons of resources in here, though. So for people who are listening, like you said, obviously you've worked with lots of people in lots of different, you know, walks of life, and you've had to develop methods that everybody can have their own method. You know, you don't say in here, all right, the way to do it is this. Everybody can sort of develop their own method of how they want to, you know, adapt this to their life. Um, yes. Can I ask you mm-hmm. one more question before we wind down to the end? Um, sure thing. I'm right. All right. Me. How do you use broth the most often in your own home? Oh, well, um, pretty much every morning I'm making a smoothie or in the winter I'm making a, a blend. And by the way, when I, when I drink them and eat them, I'm chewing and making sure I'm getting my digestive uh-huh. juices flowing. That, that really, um, is important I find for me and for folks. So it's going in there. Uh, we make soups a ton, an absolute ton. And actually there's a cauliflower bisque in the book that was the book before the book. I mean, <laughs> when, um, when we took, uh, when we took a broth that was just boosted with tons of different healing, um, flavors and made what we had usually made with water in our cauliflower bisque, it just was like, this is amazing. This, this bisque is just, we already liked it and it, we, we loved it. And I joke in the book, I think we gave ourselves five stars. It was just excellent. It was so good. <laughs> so, um, what I love is once you have a broth, you can, you can follow our recipes, but you can also just take a lot of different ingredients in your, um, a lot of vegetables and things from your fridge and then, um, you know, boil them in the broth and then blend it up and you've got a soup. And, you know, so anyway, so I absolutely love uh, making soups with broths too. But then, I mean, we're grabbing the, the broth if we're cooking oatmeal or something like that, or we're grabbing broth if um, we're making a stir fry and we've got a chicken and vegetable, super easy and quick stir fry uh, recipe in the book. Um, but yeah, really it's going into everything. I, I'm yeah. often drinking broth as like a tea, you know, uh-huh. so just warming it up and um, and then throwing in some herbs like we do, um, in our infusions as well. So nice. I'm doing it all the time. And I will say, I personally love making some bone broth and some plant-based broths so that I'm balancing out and just getting all the different kind of nutrients I need in my diet. Uh-huh. So maybe over the weekend I'll make a sweet and savory and I'll make a, um, a bone and a plant based, and then you just can infuse it through your dishes uh all week and really that's the concept of of the book i love it um i thought of another question here at talking (laughs) you may think of another question um okay so let's say the person listening is a mom with a couple kids she's always living in her sympathetic because her kids are always jumping off of things (laughs) um (laughs) she's driving around and doing things you know she's got the hustle down but but she's just living in a heightened state let's just say that's the average person because i'm I'm describing me okay (laughs) (laughs) okay what would you say where just say i'm asking you right now which recipe to start with give me one or two oh okay and recipe or, or starting with a broth or? I mean, I'm assuming I'm already making broth or assuming that I'm okay. Okay, assuming broth. you're already making broth. What would I say? Um, I would say start with something that takes under 10 minutes. So what I would do is first, actually, 
The easiest simple thing, when you're making your broth, I want you to just think about the kinds of things you can throw in that aren't gonna take you any more time. So maybe turn to our turmeric, ginger, and spice boost, Ooh. which is our immune and anti-inflammatory uh, support broth. And um, this broth, actually, if you use it in, well, well, like actually all of our boosts, if you use it in your meals, you're getting um, all of these nutrients that support healthy longevity. Um, and just as a quick aside, right at the end here, you know, we design these new these these recipes to work with Dr. Cara Fitzgerald's Younger You program, which is about turning back bio age. So I say that. Yeah, I'm for that so fascinated kids. by that. <laughs> yes, yes, it's absolutely wonderful. Um, and there's more at youngeryouprogram.com about that. And she's okay. got her her whole book called Younger You. So if you if others are interested, check it out. It's really awesome. And you can use this book to really support your younger you turning back your bio age clock journey. Um, so, so for that, 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 that parent who's got their kid kind of jumping up the wall <laughs> and they wake up and they're stressed and they feel like we're aging and we're growing older and getting gray hairs at every yeah. moment, um, turn to our turmeric, ginger, and spice boost. And you're going to be throwing in some cloves, some star anise, some cardamom, some turmeric, some ginger, just throw it in. Literally just takes a minute if you've got them right there. Um, and you're going to be getting all of these nutrients from it. It's anti-inflammatory. It supports the immune system. When your kids are coming home and bringing home germs or something like that from school, it just shores you and, and the whole family up. Mm-hmm. So, so that's one thing that I would do. And then, and, and you know, literally just, just takes a second to do. But if you have like five, 10 minutes, then going back to our warm latte blend, which is also an immune support, um, in just about five minutes, you can put it in your blender and make that. So what you're going to do is take that broth or take that boosted broth with the turmeric and ginger and all those spices. And you just throw in some apple, like whatever kind of, you know, milk of your choice and I like to use almond milk a lot in this one and throw in don't even worry about like super precise measurements some flax seeds some pecans some ginger um and some additional cinnamon and clove it it took our team we say hands-on time for this is 10 minutes but really once you make it the first time you know what you're doing it's like a five minute thing and here's the thing too, you don't even have to put it on your stove top if you want to like heat this up into a warm latte. You just put it in your blender, high speed blender, heat the lid on real tight. And then we have a quick method in the book nice. where you just blend it and heat it as it's blending. I love that. And in five minutes, you have this warm loveliness. Yeah. In five minutes, that's enough time to unload the dishwasher. Right? <laughs> so you can turn it on and just unload the dishwasher. <laughs> well, while well, it goes. Yeah, so I would do it. And then as you get excited and confident about the ease of doing this, then maybe I would transition to soups, which are almost just as quick and easy. <laughs> it's just yeah. a, it's just a soup as yeah. opposed to a blend. Yeah. So go there next. Oh, I love it. This is so fantastic. And um, yeah. I think it's going to be really wonderful for everybody listening and um, Allison and I already enjoying. Um, where can we find you and where can we find Dr. Kara? Where is good places to follow you and, and learn more from you guys? Because you guys have the goods and everybody wants oh. them. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, well, you can go, folks can go to betterbroths.com uh, for more about the book. You can go to younger you program.com for more about what Dr. Kara Fitzgerald's up to. You can find us both on LinkedIn and on Insta. On Insta, I'm, I'm, uh, it's just help. And folks can also find me and contact me through penningtonpartners.co. So those, those I'd say are the kind of best places. Hit us up. Awesome. Uh, also, Dr. Fitzgerald has a great uh, podcast called New Frontiers, and maybe that's where really? you know, maybe. maybe that's one of the ones where you heard about it too. And we we have a we have a, a an episode all about kind of the sciencey stuff too through this book. On, oh, on there good. Well. That I'm going to so go find. I that. love it. It's yeah, it's great. It's what great. was it great called? To check out too. The name of her podcast. New New Frontiers. New Frontiers. Oh, I love it. Okay, this was fantastic. Um. I know everybody's ready to go start their broth now. So check out the book, you guys, Better Broths and Healing Tonics. This will be that worn raggedy staple book on your shelf for years and years to come. Also beautifully photographed. 
you know, and you got really nice pictures in oh. here. <laughs> so <laughs> that's fun. Well, thank you for doing this interview with me. This was awesome. And I know Allison wished she could be here, um, but I'm glad that you were able to answer all of her questions and she was here in spirit. So thank you very much. Sure. Glad to be here. Thank you, Andrea. Yeah. Thank you, Allison. Just love to be with you. You have a great morning. Yep. You too. Awesome. Thank you. That was so fun. Oh, great. Thanks, Andrea. I just feel I so, so like lit up and inspired by everything you said. I just, I'm so excited. I'll turn my camera on, even though it's probably going to make my internet collapse. Um, yeah, this is so, I don't, this is just so cool. It just, it, you, you guys, um, hits, I can't believe you got the better broths website like that. Nobody took that. That was, <laughs> that's amazing. Um, yeah, you guys answered so many questions that people have asked us about things that I'm like, I don't, I don't know, but you got it all on here. So, um, what can I ask? What is a methyl donor? I don't know what a methyl donor yeah. is. Something that gives you sure. methyl sulfonyl methane or something. <laughs> well, so there's this whole um, idea about you know genetics and epigenetics, and sometimes we think that our genetics are our future, uh -huh. um, and that our health is essentially sort of locked in from birth. And that's just really uh, not the way it is. I mean, of course, there's some genetic diseases that show up kind of from infancy. For the large, large, large majority of us, it's diet and lifestyle that's influencing our gene expression or basically how our genes function to influence our health towards health okay. or, or towards disease. And so that is the field of what we call epigenetics. Okay. And so... What are methyl donors? And also kind of I'll throw in what are DNA methylation adaptogens? Yeah, yeah. Um, these are nutrients that directly impact our genetic expression. So oh. our DNA is not changeable, but proteins created from instructions provided by our genes, these are modifiable. Okay. And the best ways we that we have to modify them to modify our risk for developing disease is diet and lifestyle. So methyl donors are uh, nutrients that the body uses, yes, to generate methyl groups um, like betaine and biotin and choline and B12 and so many more. Um, and then kind of pair their, 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 their sister foods, um, especially in Dr. Fitzgerald's work, the Younger You program, uh, paired with that are DNA methylation adaptogens that really regulate DNA methylation to kind of so that our genes are turned on or off appropriately so they function our health uh, for our health in the best right. way. And at the top of every recipe, we lay out for folks the healing benefits, but also we kind of put in parentheses which foods are methyl donors and what those are okay. and which foods have DNA methylation adaptogens and what those are. So since I haven't seen the Younger You book yet, but obviously I have to check it out. I'm guessing she says in there things about this. And so then as I'm reading that book, then I say, okay, I want to find something with, um, whatever methyl donors. And then I look and yeah. here it is in the book. It says right here, these are the ones. Okay. So what's cool is yeah, in, in the back of the Younger You book, there's a whole appendix that sort of that lays out. So you can look at B12 and see all the different foods that are super high, for instance, in B12 oh, yeah. or, or choline okay, or biotin see. or betaine. And then in, that's in that's in the back of the Younger You book. Okay. And, in the, and then through Better Broads and Healing Tonics, atop every recipe, gotcha. you, can, you can match them up and, and see. Oh, what's okay. There. So they really do nest together quite well. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I feel like... Um, that's one of those things that people might think, well, I, I'm not vain. I don't care if I look like I'm 20 or whatever, but it's like, no, this isn't about that. <laughs> this is about living long, healthy, functional lives. Right. So that we heal, so that we age into sort of a healthy state, not into a disease. State. Yeah. We can do, we can do more with our years. Um, you know, and I'll just say kind of while, while we're on this topic that, you know, um, in the beginning part of the book, we explain the concept of food as medicine, that it, 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 it interacts with our bodily systems uh, on the same pathways, if you will, that drugs do as well. And um, they're actually plant-based uh, nutrients called phytonutrients. And these phytonutrients, another collective word for these are polyphenols. 
Um, but basically, there's this powerful group of nutrients in fruits and vegetables, spices, herbs, nuts, and seeds that are at the center uh, of this book. And you don't have to sort of master or memorize the science. Like, we've done it for you just to inspire you. But what I'd love to share is that it just takes micro doses, the amount found in foods, on a regular kind of daily basis to nudge and move your health into that healing healing uh, direction. Um, that the research really shows us that it's the doses found in foods mm. that are most effective for health mm. and, prevent, and for preventing disease. So it really is. We're really talking about food as medicine. There, there's a there, there. There's a major there, there. Almost like you're meant to be eating every day. <laughs> <laughs> um, would you say that that's, I mean, I, I feel like it would be, but would you say that those small daily doses would be better than, you know, the periodic big infusions that somebody might try to you know like binge on <laughs> well you know what that question reminds me of like our first thing we talked about which is sleep right i mean the most important thing for sleep is sort of regular doses yeah. nightly as yeah. opposed to you know you can't pull like five all-nighters and catch up on the weekend <laughs> okay. and that, that <laughs> really sorry i went now I you used tell to me that <laughs> <laughs> give me back my college days I'll, I'll tell you some stories but um but yeah so with these phytonutrients um the 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 idea is is getting a dose of them uh in your diet regularly and it's super easy to do if you know if you're making the kind of better brawl the healing tonics kind of foods that that we've put together um and that's why it's so important to kind of find your way of doing it of making 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 a system, if you will, or making it simple. So if you've got five, 10 minutes of time, you know, we've got ideas for you. If you've got 30 minutes, we've got ideas for you. Um, yeah. But kind of doing this day in, day out, that's what makes a, a healing life. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. So good. Well, thank you for putting this all into a book form so we can all have a little piece of your mind <laughs> in all of our kitchens. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely happy to thanks Andrea well let me let you get about your day and thank you for all this time this was wonderful and it's going to be so fantastic for everybody so thank you and have a good thank um, you. let's see what time is it it's almost your afternoon now so have a good uh, rest of your day <laughs> you too take care bye thank you to Jill we have a copy of Better Broths and Healing Tonics to give away to a listener living in the US or Canada. If you'd like to enter, either head to the Ancestral Kitchen Podcast Instagram account, the link is in the show notes, and comment on the post for this episode letting us know your biggest question about broth. Or if you're not on Instagram, send an email to me, Alison at Ancestral Kitchen, again letting us know your biggest question about broth and we'll pick a winner. The draw closes on Friday, August the 25th, 2023, so be sure to get your entry in by then. Thank you so much for listening. We'd love to continue the conversation. Come find us on Instagram, Andrea's at Farm and Hearth and Allison's at Ancestral underscore Kitchen. Until next time, we both wish you much fun exploration and satisfaction in and out of the kitchen.